Hi guys, it's Liz. In today's video, I'm talking all about the avoidant attachment style. An avoidant attachment is one of three insecure attachment styles. Insecure attachments develop from not feeling safe at some point during our formative years, specifically during infancy. This can be due to not being picked up when you're crying as a baby, to a traumatic event or multiple traumatic events. For example, a newborn infant with their umbilical cord wrapped around their neck may develop the belief that the people around them are actually trying to kill them. As the child grows up, they have a subconscious belief that they are under constant threat and thus develop an anxious attachment. In my case, my entire childhood was wrought with traumatic events, and my mom suffered with alcoholism and often left me to my own devices. It should come as no surprise that I developed an avoidant slash disorganized attachment. As someone who is highly avoidant on the insecure attachment scale, I minimize slash deny a need for other people, am incredibly self-reliant and resist depending on other people, rarely talk about myself, preferring to talk about other things and ideas, consider myself to be low maintenance, value people who are also low maintenance and don't ask too much of me, avoid conflict as much as possible or try to deal with it in the quickest way possible, will literally run away. My fight, flight, or freeze response is 99% flight. I self-soothe through snacking. That's any kind of snacking, by the way. It's not just junk food. I did have a really severe chip addiction, but now I will snack on pretty much anything. Fruits, veggies, whatever. I have a hard time connecting with others, coming across as socially awkward, distant, or cold. I'm extremely uncomfortable being touched, Logic and reason are my comfort zone. I distract myself with work, learning, TV, and social media. I have fond memories of being by myself and entertaining myself growing up rather than being with other people. I consider myself an introvert and prefer to be alone most of the time. I have commitment issues, I have a tendency to withdraw, and I am guarded. When I'm triggered, my stress levels skyrocket. In response, I'll either lash out, withdraw, numb out, or distract myself. My triggers are other people relying on me for emotional support, having to rely on others for anything, which can translate as being a control freak, being the center of attention, talking about myself, being hugged or touched without explicit consent, or me hugging or touching the other person first, feeling trapped, getting close to someone, feeling like I'm losing my autonomy, needing to shift from doing something by myself to interacting with others, feeling pressured or under pressure, and let's be real, doing these videos. Through my research and the work I've done on this attachment style, I unearthed a subconscious belief that I have little confidence in other people to meet my needs. It doesn't come naturally to believe that support will be there for me. Consciously, I understand that this is an irrational belief. Humans are programmed to rely on community for survival, but trauma isn't rational. To quote Annie Chen from her book, The Attachment Theory Workbook, for people with avoidant attachment, relying on someone too much can evoke panic and discomfort. For them, the discomfort can range from just a bit of stress to a full-blown threat response. For them, staying engaged in the conversation about an emotionally charged topic could be the hardest thing they do all week. If you related to some, most, or even all of this so far, you likely have an avoidant attachment. So what can we do about it? The first and most important thing here is awareness. You need to be aware of where you are in the different insecure attachment scales, what your traits are, what your triggers are, and what your stress responses are to those triggers. From there, you can learn what your window of tolerance is and how to manage the stress that can bubble up. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of window of tolerance, allow me to throw it to Annie Chen to explain. It describes the ideal zone of physiological activation that allows a person to function most effectively. When someone shows physical signs that they are outside of this zone, either with too high or too low arousal, this is usually an indication that their body is interpreting some kind of danger, real or imagined. Too high arousal can look like 
talking faster or in a more frantic manner, a deer in the headlights look, rapid breathing, or trembling or shaking. Too low arousal can manifest as dimming eyes, appearing numb or vacant, slurred or slow speech, collapsed posture, and getting very cold all of a sudden. It's important to be aware of what your window of tolerance is to keep from being triggered. For me, it also helps to know that I have an escape if I know I'm entering a potentially triggering situation. My stress levels are lower when I know I have a safe space to go to and or can leave the situation entirely. For example, when I'm at a party, I feel less anxious if I know I can leave before I've maxed out my window of tolerance. If that simply isn't an option, I manage the stress through finding a quiet space where I can be alone to focus on my breath and or peaceful surroundings, entering into a non-threatening conversation with a single person, or focusing my attention on a pet. When it comes to communicating with an avoidant, it can feel helpful to stick to one topic and provide relief through reassurance and a willingness to take things slow because being both assertive and collaborative can feel intense and overwhelming for avoidance. When it comes to responding to avoidant attachment, it is more effective to consider safety and stress relief before solutions. With any insecure attachment style, it comes down to feeling safe. For me, I find structure, stability, support, acceptance, consistency, and appreciation all helpful. So that's all I have for you guys for today. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you next time.